Hello everyone, this is Strawberry Shorty here with a list and review of some DSiWare titles. Some of which you may want to check out before the eShop closes next year. So this is going to be a little bit different from the lists that most people are doing. First in that it's going to be uh, basically a list and review of the DSiWare titles I have. Some I had before, some I got because of the closure, some had been on my wish list for a while. And if you don't know, DSiWare titles, I believe were part of a special point shop on the DSi. And of course that shop has long since been closed, but many of the DSiWare titles were put on the 3DS eShop. Uh, some titles were unfortunately lost forever. So a good portion of them got taken down, which is really sad. So these are, these are titles, a lot of them are titles that pretty much are not available anywhere else. Um, I, I will be including pretty much just the ones that are only available on the eShop, the, the 3DS eShop, or the only other place they're available is on mobile, because you know how mobile games are. They always get taken down or they don't get updated. So. There, there will be a few exceptions on this list, like uh, one is actually a game that got a physical release, but like costs a fortune if you want to buy it. And I'm planning to record this in kind of like installments and then just put them together, because it'd be a little hard to try and review all these different types of games at once in one go. So. If, if any of this sounds weird or disjointed, that is uh, probably why. So, so the first game on this list is going to be a bit of a cutesy one. I should probably state that I play a wide variety of games. There will be cute games on this list, there will be puzzle games, there will be horror games, there will be RPGs. So we're kicking things off with a cutesy game, and that is Anne's Doll Studio. This was a collection of five DSiWare titles, each one with a different style theme, like Gothic Lolita or Princess. Um, this is a bit of a special title in that it technically isn't DSiWare. Uh, the, the original five games were, but they got taken down, and I was terrified that they'd been lost forever. And so I'm like googling around, desperately trying to find this. this is, it's, it's, it's a dress-up game. You know, very good looking dress up game. Just dress up dolls, put them on a background, choose choose background, choose border, put them in outfits, and you take a picture. You get what you pay for. So I, I had been like Googling like crazy and I came across a very similar looking game called uh, Fashion Doll Atelier. Atelier? I always say Atelier, but. And. I eventually discovered that this appears to be a collection, a combination of the different Anne's Doll Studio games. Um, I'm not quite sure what that's about, but like looking on like the delisted games page, it actually does list a physical release of them with a Japanese name that has like the words doll and fashion and atelier and atelier or whatever inside them. So it does appear that this title, Thought Lost, is actually still available. It is eShop only. So I wanted to throw it on the list for people that like that kind of game. Next on the list we have uh, two time management games. The first is called Bookstore Dream. And you, you run a bookstore. Uh, probably the biggest problem with this game is the tutorial is basically just a like 24 page reading thing and it does like it really this is these types of games really need like a visual thing where they they teach you how to play because it's it can be very very hard to get the hang of and like it it, it definitely starts off really daunting and like you'll look at the amount of money you have to pay each week and you're just like there's no way there's no way I'm going to be able to do this um, it does get more enjoyable as you kind of get into the swing of things. Uh, feel free to post in the comments if you need any help, because <laughs> there, there's not really much in the way of like guides for this game. Um, 
In terms of criticisms, I, I would say that there's no fast forward option. So there will be a lot of sitting there waiting for the game to <laughs> to just go forward. Um, I also, it's also not 100% clear when it saves. I think it saves at the start of each day, but the game doesn't really tell you that. And then Publisher's Dream, I believe is made by the same person because it looks identical and it's basically kind of the same concept in except instead of running a bookstore you are uh, trying to become a video game publisher. Uh, I, I haven't played as much of that one. I found it a bit more confusing. Like it basically suffers from the same thing where it doesn't really give you like a step-by-step -step tutorial and even the reading thing is not super comprehensive. Um, but, like, I, I would say if either of these games appeal to you, maybe try Bookstore Dream first, and then think about whether or not you want to give uh, Publisher Dream a try. Uh, they, they're, they're not bad games, though. Like, for the price, especially. If you're into that kind of game, like games like Theme Park and whatnot, I, I would recommend checking them out. So the next game I want to talk about is... Probably one of the most uh, reoccurring DSiWare games is something called the GG series. That's G dot G dot series. I'm not sure what that stands for, but they have released a bunch of DSiWare games and they're all like really different. And so one that caught my eye is called Assault Buster. And this is basically a shoot 'em up game where you play as a girl with a gun and a sort of like jetpack thingy. And I kind of had to learn how to play on my own. The, some of the manuals for these games look like really weird and you don't even realize that they have instructions. So basically she has this, uh, this charge thing that refills steadily after you use it. And you can use it to like uh, dash across the screen or like just dash up into the air and you can shoot the the enemies are above her and they're they're fire, firing downwards so sometimes it'll be easier to hit them if you like dash upwards so you're basically flying and you're like you like slowly fall as you shoot and yeah i mean that's that's basically it it's 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 not like super noteworthy for a shoot 'em up game but i found it pretty fun to play i don't know how like far it goes like how many levels there are but it's like it's it's a dollar 99 all all of the uh, the gg series of games are so if you're into that style of game, I would strongly recommend you check it out. While we're talking about uh, shoot 'em up games, I also want to throw out uh, Little Red Riding Hood's Zombie Barbecue, which has to be one of the best game titles ever. Um, so this is the game I was talking about that actually does have a physical release, but it is going for insanely high prices online, like hundreds of dollars. So maybe grab it on the eShop. It's one of the slightly more expensive eShop games. I think it was like $7.99, but it is well worth it if you like this kind of game. Uh, you play as... you can play as either Little Red Riding Hood or Momotaro, who is apparently like a Japanese folklore fairy tale figure and uh, basically you do various worlds that are based on different fairy tales and this this game will twist those fairy tales in such horrific and creative ways like I still remember some of them like years later it's 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 a really good game well worth experiencing um, I would say the only downside for me was that to get the true ending you have to beat the game on like hard difficulty and the game doesn't tell you that and, and hard difficulty i remember being really hard <laughs> like i don't think I, I ever managed to do it i think i had to watch the ending on youtube but yeah it's it's your standard uh on rails shooter but i i definitely recommend it uh there is a sort of sequel spiritual sequel type game that will be on one of the other lists but yeah, definitely check that one out. So up next, we have two hidden object games, Chronicles of Vampires Origins and its sequel, Chronicles of Vampires Awakening. And look, I, I for those of you that just came here for the, these uh, this DS content, 
Um, I do Let's Plays and reviews of a lot of hidden object games. If you are unfamiliar with them, they're like your standard, you know, list of objects. You got to find them hidden in a scene. And there's, there's usually puzzles and some stories. Stories tend to fall a little flat, but these games usually have pretty good atmosphere. Um, like, th they're generally a fairly good experience, but uh, DS versions tend to not be as good. I, th I thought Millionaire was uh, pretty great, and the, uh, the Edgar Allan Poe conspiracy, but most of them are not, in part because the DS has a very small screen. And even, like, I, I had gotten the first, uh, the first Chronicles of Vampires game years ago, beat it, deleted it, didn't remember anything about it, so I re-downloaded it, re-beat it, and wow, I'm surprised I don't remember it, because it's really bad. <laughs> like, first, again, the, because the screen is so small, the images are really blurry and hard to see, and... Yeah, and I, I learned that when you tap too much, the uh, the hint charge decreases. So there there was a lot of sitting around waiting to do the hints. Uh, the puzzles are not explained like at all, unless I miss something. They're not that hard though, especially if like me, you've played hidden object games. You'll figure out pretty fast what you need to do. If you haven't, you might run into some problems. The story is almost comically nonsensical. <laughs> like, I kind of wish I could have recorded it for a Let's Play. It just, it's so strange. It's not written very well at, at all. It's just like, oh, hey, you, you found these books. How about you help find more books for me? Okay, okay, go to Spain. And it's like, wait, what? Like, it's just, it's happening so fast. Uh, none of the characters really get developed. And then it just suddenly cuts off and is like, by the sequel. And these games are four ninety nine each, which isn't a terrible price for a hidden object game, but like even the ones on Big Fish Games, which like the, the even they are like at least they're full stories and much better quality. Don't forget that. But so also there was a problem where the text would sometimes be too big for the text box, and it's supposed to like scroll. But you don't realize that you can wait and it will start scrolling automatically because it takes a bit. So you'll, you can scroll it with the stylus, but then you run the risk of accidentally skipping the text, which sucks. Um, and oh yeah, they, they also had these, uh, these arrows where you could go to different parts of a scene. And it, it does a thing I hate, hate where if you're in one room and there's nothing left to find in the room and you use a hint, it'll just basically tell you to click on the arrow. And then you have to wait for the hint to recharge again. And it's like, that's really annoying. Most modern hidden object games will not do that. If you need to go to another location, it will show you, but it will not take your hint away. At least if it's a good hidden object game, it won't. Uh, there were also times where you'd have to do other stuff. Like, I'd find everything and the story wouldn't progress. And it's like, oh, I have to use this key I found to open something. But while a modern hidden object game, you could examine the thing and be like, oh, this is locked, I need to find a key. Here that doesn't happen, so you're often just kind of throwing items at stuff and trying to figure out what works. And yeah, there, there was also a really weird kind of visual thing with the characters. Like the main character, who, who's this journalist, uh, Linda, she's she, she's a drawn character. But then, and then like there, there's like like a male character who like recruits her to help him out and. He, he also appears to be a drawn character, but then, like, th there's a bunch of other characters who who appear to be real people. Like, pictures of real people that are in the game with the drawn people. And, like, I, I literally took a picture of my uh, DS screen solely so I could show a picture of probably my favorite one. So I'll have to remember to edit that in, but it's it was so funny. It was probably one of the most enjoyable things about this. Um, so... I, I actually was not going to buy the sequel, it's just like, I'll just watch a Let's Play of the sequel, but guess what? There's no Let's Plays of this game. I could not find any on YouTube. And I, I honestly wasn't planning to review these games at all, because I figured that there would surely be a version on Big Fish Games, because it's, it's rare to find a hidden object game that does not have a counterpart on Big Fish Games, because that's usually what they're released for. <laughs> but no, this is apparently DSiWare exclusive. So... 
I ended up buying the sequel today, and I beat it today because you can't download or even buy more DSiWare unless you have space, and it can only save your system memory for some reason, so... So I, I just finished beating it now. Uh, it does not really improve. It has all of the same problems as the first one. I guess I would say the story is mildly more interesting. Uh, like with many hidden object games, it would have been better if they'd put a bit more work into it, but... I would still say other games have better stories than this, even in the hidden object genre. Um, big, biggest uh, note I would have here is that near the end of the game, the screen was very unresponsive. Like, I, I would do a lot of random clicking to try and find items, and for some reason, these would not register, and I'd have to like really press the stylus down hard to get it to register. And this only happened near the end, so... There was also a scene where an arrow popped up and I couldn't do anything with it, I guess because I had to find all the objects in one scene. It's never done that before, so I didn't really... Like, I thought my game was glitching out. So, that's that's all I really have to say about those two titles. Uh, I, I can't super recommend them because they're not great. Uh, I get, they're, In a way, they're kind of fun to laugh at because of how terrible they are, but... Like, if you get them, I would recommend only get them because you really like hidden object games and no one else has them. <laughs> They're not, like, recorded anywhere. So they, they really will be gone forever once the, the eShop closes, so... And now let's uh, talk about another one of the GG series of games, and this one is also a shooter, although I did not realize that when I bought it. It is called Wonderland. <laughs> you play as Alice of Alice in Wonderland, and it's, it's one of the, uh, the scrolling type of shooters. And you can only shoot upwards, and you have like a heavy attack that makes you move slow. And you have a, a wider attack that is not super strong. And then like the more you kill attack enemies, you get like a, a charge thing. And when that's filled, you can do a, uh, a special attack that turns all the enemies like shots into like points or something. And you only have... Uh, three hearts, and when you lose them all, you die, and you have to start the level over. And uh, there, there's, from what I can tell, there's only three levels in this. Uh, it's it's fairly hard. There's only three levels, and if you like, I I died in finally got to level two, and then I died in level two. And when I was at the main menu and I chose to continue, I was back at the beginning of level two. And I left the game, came back, and then reloaded. Or, or started, and then I was back at the beginning of stage one. So it doesn't appear to save your progress once you leave the game. Um, the backgrounds are kind of dull for a wonderland theme game. I did kind of like the sprites, especially the sprite for Alice. It's super cute. Um, this, this was kind of an enjoyable game. The, the final boss for the first stage is really hard. <laughs> like... And kind of a problem that I noticed with this game is that, like, so there's two main, I'll call them bullet types that the enemies shoot at you. One looks like a green sparkle, and then the other one is like a big purple circle. And like, the green sparkles would often hit my character and do nothing. But then other times they would take away one of her lives. And the purples were more consistent with doing damage. So... Like, I did read a review that mentioned something about, like, the hitbox being off, so maybe that's it. But it was it was very strange. So, I, I don't regret buying this one. Um, if, if you're into shooters, maybe check it out. Like, it's 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 $1.99, so while it's not super flashy or anything, it is, it is an enjoyable enough experience for such a low price. I'd also like to take a moment to throw out uh, a few DSiWare titles I have not played. One of them is the sequel to Art Academy, which is Art Academy Second Semester. It's a game that teaches you about like drawing and shading. I have the first one, which apparently does have a physical release, but the second one I believe is DSiWare only. First game got a little long-winded and was not super entertaining, but if you're into art, you might enjoy it. The other games I want to throw, about, throw out here are some uh, DLC. There's kind of an unknown 
RPG called uh, From the Abyss. Uh, I, I don't think it was super well received, like somewhere in the middle. I have not played this one myself, but it has four DLC episodes uh, called Anonymous Notes, parts one through four. So if you have any interest in checking out From the Abyss, you might want to consider downloading those now while you can. I don't know how much they are. I don't think they're super expensive. I plan to grab them and then just get from the Abyss later. Don't want to miss out on DLC. So moving on, I will throw out the House MD games. If you are familiar with the TV show House, it is a medical drama about a not so very nice doctor trying to figure out what's wrong with patients. And I, I believe these games, there's like, I think five of them. Uh, I, I believe they did technically get physical releases. Like I kept seeing pictures of a North American DS version, but like I could not find anywhere you could buy it. So like maybe it's like really rare. There's also a PC version with really good graphics, but that is also apparently really rare. Um, whether you want to buy this one or not, like that's hard to say. Like each episode is seven ninety nine, which is a bit of a hefty price tag. Um, if you're not a fan of a show of the show, they don't really tell you who the characters are. There are uh, profiles hidden away, and I think the options menu, which is nice, but they're so hidden you probably won't find them. <laughs> Um, I only found them because I read a I read the Nintendo Life review and I was looking up information about a physical release. And Nintendo Life didn't like this game either. They really don't like any DSMware titles, do they? But I, I didn't actually think this game was that bad. Uh, first, graphically, for a I guess a port of the PC game, it looks really good. Like the characters actually do look like the characters from the show. I thought it had some good humor. Um, there's there's these uh these dialogue choice selections when you're trying to question people about, you know, tr trying to work out what the illness might be. I thought those were a little boring. There's really no indication what the correct answer is to pick. There there were some, again, some kind of funny commentary from House, but these moments just weren't super exciting. There's also a bunch of mini games, and the mini games were just, just your standard hospital type mini games. Uh, they were not great or terrible. Um, I, I think the, the only one I really could not stand, I, I only played the first episode. Like, they're so expensive, I can't buy them all, like, promptly. So, like, if I buy them, it would be way after this video comes out. But the, the first game has this thing where you, you collect samples from, like, a person's yard, and then you have to place these samples where they were found in the yard based on these photographs, and you really cannot see the photographs clearly. And it was not fun trying to figure that out. Uh, also, one of the minigames is like a word-guessing minigame. You got like a like a thing where it starts filling out the letters of some type of illness, and you have to... A bunch of the illness names are hopping around. You have to grab one and throw it upwards, trying to figure out which one is the right one. And... I thought they did this minigame a little too much at once. Like, I get that they're trying to mimic the show where everyone's, like, shouting out the different diagnoses, but it did get a little... It just got a little repetitive. Um, on top of that, I also frequently ran into an issue where I'd, like, fling the thing upwards and it would just, like, stick to the, the screen and not go up to the the top half of the screen. Like, that was, that was maddening. There, there were a few moments when I wasn't clear on what to do. Like, it'd be like, okay, press the tongue down using this. And it's like, where do I put this thing? I think you have to put it at the t very tip of the arrow. Like, it's very specific. But I, I thought the, the game was pretty enjoyable overall. Um, like, it told... It, it, it did kind of feel like an episode of House, you know? with There's like a side patient that you, you deal with. Along with the main patient, patient there's, there's plot twists and turns, at least for the first episode. Again, I cannot say anything about the following episodes. The, the only real downside is the price tag. I wish it was cheaper. Unlike some of the other games on this list, the, this one does seem to have 
a playthrough online so if you do think it's too expensive you could always check out the video though how fun that would be I don't know or I guess you could just watch the video to see if it looks fun to play but yeah so another game I want to throw out that I haven't exactly played myself is a title called surviving high school so this was actually a mobile game released by EA games that had like about a billion episodes and you could make choices and there was a football mini game and it was I believe it was fairly popular and ended up being quite costly when you consider how much all the different seasons and episodes cost but EA games eventually took it down so there if, if you want to play it like even if you bought it you could not download it off of the app store I have never played the DS version. I believe it is only one arc, the uh, the football arc, which I think is the first one. I've heard people say there's a few miscellaneous episodes in there too, but like I, I just figured I'd throw it in there for people that either are familiar with surviving high school and desperately want to play it again, or for people that just might be interested in that kind of thing. Like I know a lot of people were not happy when EA Games took that down, so. If you still want to play it, this is pretty much your only chance because they're not relisting it and it's not available anywhere else. You can watch like the episodes on YouTube probably, but if you want to actually play and experience them yourselves, this little DSWare title might be the only way. So for the last game on this list for now, because I have I've decided I'm going to do two parts because I can't download and play every DSiWare title on my list. Um, so for the last game on this part, I have a game called Penguin Patrol, which is another one of the GG games. It is a super cute puzzle game where basically your job is to rescue poor, helpless, adorable little penguins. They have been kidnapped by some evil sunglasses wearing walrus and you're put on like this this platform with a bunch of tiles and the tiles are typically like many of them are ice and they will crack as you walk over them meaning you can't go back and so you have to find a way to rescue all the penguins and reach the end of each level and you get like bonus points if you manage to clear all the ice and like, I haven't beaten it yet, but I am really enjoying it so far. It is a lot of fun, especially for how cheap it is. So, I would definitely recommend that. And so, like I said, that's that's all for now, but there will be another part to this. I'm also planning to do uh, some videos about uh, non-DSiWare titles. I, I really wanted to just bring some attention to the DSiWare titles because... Like, so many of them have been delisted already, and it's like, grab them while they're still there, because most of these titles will be gone forever. So, thank you so much for watching. Uh, have you played any of the games on this list? Do any of them sound interesting? Do you have any questions? Let me know in the comments, and I will catch you next time. Bye!